This is WPTF, the first 50 years. 1924. Radio was just four years old as a form of entertainment. But radio fans in the Raleigh community were caught up in the excitement this new form had to offer. Ears were strained to distinguish between static and voices of WEAF New York, WBZ Springfield, KDKA Pittsburgh, and WLW in Cincinnati. But in 1924, a new voice took to the airwaves, Raleigh's own radio station. Built and owned by the late Will A. Wynn, Raleigh's first station began as WFBQ. During the 20s, the call letters were changed from WFBQ to WRCO, and the station grew from 50 watts to 100, then 250, 500, and finally to 1,000 watts. The station first signed on at 1190 kilocycles, later jumped to 1380, then 720, and later 550, before finally settling for the present frequency 680. In 1927, the Durham Life Insurance Company purchased the station, and the call letters were changed to WPTF, representing the motto of the company, We Protect the Family. It was during the 20s that this became a familiar sound. This is the National Broadcasting Company. As WPTF moved into the 30s, the radio industry became an important source of information and entertainment. Many homes found the family gathered around the radio as radio sets were becoming less expensive. For example, Atwater Kent's were reduced to $27. And with the expanded range of WPTF, listeners were joining a nation of radio fans, enjoying such favorites as these. Jump on the Manhattan Mary We take you back to Jack Benny's dressing room. He's getting ready for the program, and Rochester is shaving him. Hold still while I lather you. Rochester, you have to use that much. I refer, of course, to the resident of 79 Wistful Vista, Molly's husband, Fibber McGee. As we look in on the McGee's, Fibber is tinkering... News from around the world became available through the national networks, and the 30s provided the WPTF community with live on-the-scene coverage of worldwide events. In December of 1936, our listeners heard this overseas transmission. England's King Edward VIII. I found it impossible to carry the heavy burden of responsibility and to discharge my duties as king as I would wish to do without the help and support of the woman I love. As the 30s drew to a close, WPTF entered a new era in news programming. H.V. Kaltenborn was added to NBC's team of news analysts, and such programs as The March of Time were bringing us some very disturbing echoes from across the Atlantic. The serious tone of the news was offset with some of the best-loved big band sounds to set your feet a tapping. Remember Glenn Miller and Woody Herman and North Carolina's own Kay Kaiser? There were the Dorseys, Tommy and Jimmy, and Frankie Carl, and the list goes on and on. The Grand Ole Opry was a Saturday night program thousands of Tar Heels, as well as the rest of the nation, wouldn't miss for the world. On the stage of the Grand Ole Opry House in Nashville, Tennessee, this is Art Divine, inviting you to join us for the tops in country music. Here is Miss Delwood. And On Del- May 24th, 1941, WPTF became a broadcast giant with the dedication of its new 50,000-watt transmitter, the maximum power allowed for a standard radio station. The voice, General Manager Richard Mason. A number of distinguished guests representing the city of Raleigh, the state of North Carolina, and the radio industry are with us tonight to participate in this dedicatory program. With 50,000 watts of power, WPTF took on a man-sized job of news reporting. War had been declared, and this station remained on the air 24 hours a day, serving as a homing guide for U.S. Air Force planes. Scores of newsmen file their daily reports from the European and Pacific theaters, and top news analysts here in America helped us to understand what was taking place. Now, obviously, if 
Molotov and Stalin continue their policy of anticipating what may happen... Perhaps the warmest memories of some of WPTF's broadcasts during those war years were those times when we were able to share the laughter of thousands of homesick G.I.s as they were entertained by that intrepid performer, Bob Hope. And now we find Bob and Skinny Annas at Camp San Luis Obispo on their way to the quartermasters to get their uniforms. Hey, come on, Skin. Come on, Skin. we got to go into the quartermaster's office and get some equipment. But finally, the war was over. Here's how WPTF shared in this joyous news as it brought its listeners the news long awaited throughout the world. Someone has taken off his shoes, put them on a broomstick to signal victory, and is waving them up in front of the NBC mobile unit. This is Robert St. John in the NBC newsroom in New York. Tonight is a night such as America has never known before. America has gone wild. Bedlam rules Manhattan as it does most every other city in the country. Peace. Peace. Isn't it wonderful? (laughs) 